Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to demonstrate this particular script through here. So it's um, uh, so I'm just going to run it and uh, start it off. Basically, uh, it's a little file that I've got that I can actually add some hours to. I can choose a project that I wanted to do, and then I can actually add some information. So what activities I've done on that particular thing, and I go OK. And what that does is it goes and writes it into a file. And so it writes it in. There. I'm not too sure if that was one I actually just fired through, um, but but that's what it's actually doing. Um, so uh, I suddenly thought I've been having some real difficulty trying to do um, classes, and I've and I've really got to step back to a bit of history with this. Is that um, I used to use AutoCAD, and that actually had this lovely little scripting language called Lisp. And you are able to maybe change three or four or five different commands all together, and you just have one hotkey, and it would do this. So it really speeded up your your work. And once you actually set up ones that really work, you'll just fire through the stuff that you're doing. When I moved over to BIM and into Revit, um, they didn't allow you to have this low-level scripting language. What they had ended up doing was having this stuff where you actually had to have an add-in. Um, and it would be calling this API. So it's calling all these classes within the database, which was the actual program itself. And then you actually had to modify or manipulate these things. So I started, went out and I, I started to use this uh, free course for Fundamentals of C Sharp, for vet, which is basically, you know, um, creating your first programs, Hello World and all of that sort of rubbish. Later on, it got to the classes. And about that sort of time, it sort of all left me. I suddenly thought I can get the beginning stuff and do all of that, and 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 for, for a couple of years I was trying to actually not continuously just kept on having little attempts at just trying to run a, to to do add-ins to 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 actually use the API, uh, which was actually just calling classes and methods and that, and I could, couldn't get it to work. I bought books, I did other things, at the end of the day it did not work for me. So on uh, over time and things like that, I've I've, I've done things. There's this video here, which is the intro to classes, the intro to classes in order hockey, learn how and why to use classes. And it's actually the person who's doing the, the although it's Joe, Joe Glines, Jean Lalonde, who is the person who uh, does the uh, uh, QAP, uh, quick access pop-up. This program that I think is very apparently he rewrote this. He had it written one way and he wrote it into classes again. I've looked on the site for uh, all our hotkey and there's a few on the topic here, but they just generally look pretty big and pretty intimidating. Now I'll read, uh, I'll watch some videos on uh, OOP, object oriented programming, and all of that, and the way that you're sort of trying to do reusable code and doing some intelligent things with all of that. And I can sort of see the notion of it, but I can't sort of suddenly think, right, I will go and just write one myself and do it, and it'll actually it happen. So my strategy at this point in time is to take this particular program that I've adapted from uh, Joy. Joy's got one called Report Time. Uh, and, and there's a link in here as to where you can get it. So I'll put a link in for that. So I've done these courses. I've looked at these videos and things like this. This particular one is, is actually quite good because of the fact that it's got... Um, it's got... Uh, uh, the scripts for it. So, uh, and, but it's, uh, and what this thing does is it goes and reads a CSV file and uh, it, in that CSV file it's got the name of the song, what album it belongs to, how long it is, what year it was actually done and, the, and where, which track it is on a particular album and it reorders the thing. So it's actually, and, and he's using one, some classes called albums and then he's using another class called um, uh, uh, down below called song so if I just run this script here um, and I'm just going to run that through there and it just says so it's reading I'm just going to say yes copy the clipboard and what this is doing is it's taking this one here this Beatles short so if we just go through and look at this Beatles shorts uh, this is the, the thing so it's tabbed and eliminated this one here and then if I just delete and go V this is how it comes. So it restructures all of these things into this. So it reads off. So they could be in order or they could not be in order. Like, in fact, I can take that very first one or the very last one there and go and put it at the top B and save that. 
and uh, so it's got number five on the thing and if I just go through and uh, rerun that one again uh, we can copy that to clipboard and if we just go through select all and delete that and go V well oh, something's happened there didn't quite like that one if we still got dig and it's still got it in the order that we wanted let's just take that again let's just uh, uh, run that again copy to clipboard um, I haven't really done that much exploring you know, but a lot of times when I get somebody uh, something or something I go and try and break it and I obviously have so uh, I'd most probably go back into that shorts take that out of there and put it back into that location okay Z Z Z Z Z Z so that's what it is originally and uh, so if I now run that one again we take the clipboard and put it back again and it puts it through into that order there so obviously some things you can mess with and other things can't but if you actually look at the data it's actually done this nice formatted putting stuff inside the brackets putting an underline as to what the title of the um, album is and the date of the album and then it's also an interesting thing that it's going through here that is nice to actually pick up is that it's actually taking if we look at the duration the duration is in seconds and it's taking the duration and it's modifying it into minutes and seconds which is how you tend to read um, albums and things like that and it's putting them in order and I think I did try somewhere else to take them out of order and I think it did I can't remember if it did do it, them by order with the songs now he goes through and explains all of this in the videos and he's sort of like he's got the big picture and the stuff and he's using arrays to actually do all of these things so that's his methodology through there but he seems to be quite familiar quite comfortable with it and also there's a lot of um, uh, explanations that he's got to some of these and he's sometimes got links to other things uh, that are quite useful as well uh, so it's it's a very very good video from the point of view but I always find it's like when I was learning math and these other people who knew when they were trying to explain to me it was just gibberish you either knew or you didn't and you've got to kind of find your own way to learn about something and this is the issue that I ended up with so what I suddenly thought well I had the notion of a variable so let's just see so first of all I suddenly thought um, uh, uh, this is what I actually want to do I actually want to get an input and I'm just going to have an input box I'm going to put an input in there and I want to display it as a message so this is how I'd normally do it in, in auto hotkey so if I just run that and I run that now it comes up and I go one two three and I go message box one two three cool so that's how I do it there but how would we do it with classes okay then so first of all we got the input box I'll actually just um, uh, uh, take this bit here out we don't want that at the moment we, we, we're going to create a class and it's going to have one variable or sorry when it comes in it's called an attribute inside here if it's outside it's a variable if it's inside it's an attribute and I'm actually going to and, and I'll run that out as well um, that was just something later I've got one um, method it's called so it's something like a function but what I can do with this I've got this attribute inside my class or an instance of my class I'm going to make it into a string and then I'm going to put it as a message box so the first thing that I've got to do is I've got my input box and uh, and, and this one here for my new class called TC I need to give it a variable so that I can put it inside so and it then becomes an attribute so I need to give it this thing here so I'm going to generate this with the input box I'm going to put something into there I'm going to put it into there and I'm going to put it on this new instance of TC1 I'm going to call it TC1 and it's oh it's a new object I think I don't know I'm still confused about objects and classes and stuff so anyway it's a new class or whatever and it's just called new object so it's one of those I'm going to give it this and it's going to put it into that then I'm going to call this same instance and say and run this function or run this method called show me and this method because the show me is inside of the class it has access to this um, attribute here so we can do something with that so when we run this here if I go shift and run 
it comes up and I'm going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. Easy. That's good. Seems an awful lot of lines just to do exactly what I could have done with two lines. But the nice thing with this is that I can actually make a, a second instance. I can, and all I need to do is I can give it the same input box. I don't even have to change the name of this variable through here. And I can actually do it through here. So on this one here, if we just save this and run this one through here, I go one, two, three, and that does you wrote one, two, three, which is there. Now I can go three, four, five, and I can go okay. Oh, sorry, I've got to show me two, sorry. Uh, save, and I'm going to run that through again. One, two, three, and then wrote one, two, three, and this one here, three, four, five. And we go OK through there, and you write 345. Now I can actually just demonstrate that again. We can actually say, after doing that, I'm going to pause that, and those variables are still hanging, oh, sorry, those two classes are still there, and they've still got those attributes in them. And until we actually return and quit out of the program, they're still available to us. So anything we put in those classes is still available until we kill them off. Now inside the class itself, you see we've got no returns because. Um, uh, we're, we're just gathering the stuff or we're doing things. We're actually doing the return through here. So this is the thing. So after we've done something, it'll jump out and do the next one. So if we put a return, it just stops at a certain point. We don't want that to actually happen. So in this particular one through here, if we now run through there, so we're going to go one, two, three, okay. There you wrote one, two, three. And then I'm going to do three, four, five. And we go, okay, you go three, four, five. Now I've got this message box just to pause to say, we've inputted the data, we've displayed the data, where's it gone? And what this is saying, well, if we run these two again, so on object, uh, on the instance one, OTC one, uh, we'll now be able to run it again. So as soon as I go, okay, you wrote one, two, three. So this is what it says in my message box under the show me. And then if uh, number two, you show me the second one through there. So we can add another method, and on this method we can actually call it something else. So on on the for, we can actually say for for this one here we're going to use method number two. And let's just uh, unrend that at this point in time. And the method number two instead of you wrote, I've actually just got it somewhere else. So it, this is another method that we're doing. So we can use once we got those objects in there, we can call them off. And like in the first one, I'm going to call it object two, and then. Object two, the first one I actually create it is going to have the first instance, and then the second one we're going to do it in the reverse order. So if I now run this one here, one, two, three, enter, now you, you, you wrote this thing. So it's calling the second method because that, that object, uh, that variable has been put into there as an instance. It's available for that method, and so we've got that. The second one we do three, four, five. That's using the first one, so it says you wrote three, four, five. Then we're going to have the message box. We're going to pause, and we have those things in there. Now the first one, instead of show me two, we're going to use show me, so it's going to do it in the polite way, you wrote one, two, three. The second one, we still have that attribute in there from our new instance two, and it's going to show you wrote this other thing, three, four, five. So therefore, once we've got that, we've created an instance of that class, we can start manipulating and we can choose. We can have a whole lot of functions and things in there and we can do it. So, okay then. So that's quite good with one attribute. So let's start making things uh, going in the, the next step along. So we're going to go to something with, uh, oh no, wait a minute, I've got to go and find my three variables. Three variables. So on this one here, I've got worker number one, which is uh, so that we're, we're making a class and we're making a new. The first one is age, the second one is name, and the third one is title. So we need these things in there. We can have them in any order through here as long as we give the attributes that we're bringing in. So when we give the variables and assigning them, as long as we assign the correct ones in that order of whatever order. Now, I could actually have title, name, age. I could have it any way around. And as long as we bring it in in the right way, it will show in the right way and then come onto these variables. So how we order this here is of no matter at all. It could be any way along. This is where we need them. They need to be fed in 
the way that they're described through here. And we have to have three. So if I actually say, um, uh, what can I do there? If I actually say, I want two things through here, uh, sorry, I asked for a fourth thing through here. Now, this is the interesting one. If I go, uh, I want a blurgle, whatever that is, but I can come down here and I can actually have uh, a new one uh, B, and I can actually have a new B. This is, uh, and that's a shift B blurgle. There. It's asking for four things and I'm only giving it three things. Look what happens. If I run this now, you wrote blank. Because it's asking for four elements and we're only giving it three. So it breaks. It doesn't do it. It says, no, you're not giving us things. So as long as I give it something else, one, two, three, and this one here, four, five, six, and go save. If I now run that, sorry, now this part here, I just want to um, rem out. I don't need any of those. Uh, oh, what do I do? Yeah, I just uh, take that back there and do that B at that point there. Uh, 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 there, you wrote, you wrote there, you wrote. The fact that I haven't got the fourth because I'm not in here showing the fourth item. Now I could actually say plus um, V this a blurgle whatever that one is save and run then it will go it's showing me all the elements that I actually have through there but if I actually ask for four and I only give it three it breaks so you're going to make sure you have whatever the correct elements are through there so that's the thing with the show me you don't have to show it once we've got them in here and they've been populated then we can do a lot of things through here with it so we don't we can only show one element if we want we don't have to show all the other ones now here's another one if i instead of doing those quotes i put a comma in here and i go and run that so instead of all these quotes i'd use commas look what happens here you wrote that you wrote that it just goes to the first one and breaks so you can't do that it doesn't like using commas into there so this is how you start playing with things to actually test them out to see when they work and when they don't work so then the next thing that we actually do is when I was actually trying to do something, I was suddenly saying, well, okay, then how do I change an attribute in here? So I actually want to change this, and I'm going to say now the employee is actually uh, 24. So I can actually go worker one. So I'm getting that instance, and then I go this dot um, age, uh, so if I go to that, and then I can actually say, I'm going to assign it to be uh, 23. And I'm going to have uh, this one. So I'm just going to display it again afterwards. So if I just run this now, the first one, so it's doing the first line where we got that information. It's doing the second line where we're doing that. And nothing's changed. It's going back and showing the other one. So this doesn't work. You've got to have the instance and then the attribute now if I do it there and go run you wrote to Timothy to begin with Anthony the second one now it's changed to 23 so that's good so that's how you do it you need to have the instance and then the attribute that you want to change now as well as that what we can do inside here and here's an example uh, and I just ran that ran that out we don't actually need that other one this again it's just changing the name from one thing to another is that we can actually do some math on it now I'm doing the math outside but you could actually do the math inside now uh, we'll, we'll run this and then we do this so I've got this variable and I've called it 42 then I've added 3 to it so I've added 3 so it's gone from 42 to 45 and then I've said the workers age is this so if I just go um, uh, run now you can see it starts off as 22 it then goes to 26 and then I've gone to 45. So it's 42 plus the 3 to 45 that's come through here. Now, I've done that outside, but I could have done that inside of here, which is what um, 
he has done in his object. So inside his class intro, through here, in here, when he's getting, and this is for the song, when he gets the song coming in, he gets the track, he gets the title, and for the duration, he divides it by 60 to turn, like I think if you look at the time, to something like 207 seconds. So he's dividing it by 60 to get the number of minutes, and then he's getting the mod, so the remainder, and he's dividing it and, and he's getting it as a, a portion of 60. So that could be, um, uh, and, and the mod, it's mod of 60, so whatever the remainder is, is going to be the number of seconds. So he's got the number of minutes because he's divided by 60, and then he's got the mod, which will be the remainder. So we can now convert that. So um, uh, you'll see that all of the times are actually in minutes and seconds and he's formatted them this way. So there's a lot of nice formatting he's done in this particular um, coding through here. So a lot of this intimidating stuff up the top here could just be a way of doing the formatting to make it actually look a little bit nicer and, and breaking it down as to how he's structuring it and actually writing it. So, um, uh, But the way in here he's got this nested one again, which is a little bit confusing. So I'm starting to get to the point where, okay, then I can play with this and I know how to change an assignment if I need to. Now, I don't really want to, but I, I just want to become a little bit familiar with how the variables work. Now, what I've done with this one here is that I've suddenly said, well, okay, then, what I want to do is the next test that I've done through here. So I've just done my test on the three variables, wherever it is. The three variables through there. Um, uh, and I've done that, and I've, I've done a, a mathematical thing. So I was just playing with a little bit of math there just to see that it worked, and it worked. So I felt comfortable that I'd actually done uh, a, an, an alteration. And then I was actually reflecting, and I suddenly thought the better thing to do was be to actually put the person's birth date down and then find out what today is so that it'll automatically give you the worker's age as in their current age so whenever you go and look so if you were doing something on that you would actually have this function that would then calculate how old they are based on their birth date so if you had their birth date depending it would just make sure that you had their current birth date, uh, their current age straight away whereas this one you're suddenly thinking when was this actually putting in there three years ago two years ago so how much how old are they now so this is where I take things and I start playing and breaking and trying to twist them and do and doing a little bit of manipulation just to kind of query things. You say, I wonder if that does this or not. Um, so, so this is one of the things to do. Now, when I was doing this, and if you look at his class through here, um, this is something that's confused me and I still haven't got to the bottom yet. But at the bottom, he actually has this thing called the property, the object property you would call to get so you get the property from the um, from the class or the instance of that class and then you set it so this one is called this dot property name or whatever uh, and then you return this dot property name value so that's where you set the value so you say I've got the first one and if we look at the initial one that we were looking at um, with the three variables through there we'd we, we got the 22, the A through there, and then we changed it and we said, okay, then we're now going to assign this value through here, a 45 or whatever to it. So I'm still trying to dig into that one a bit. But again, this is my preliminary. This is the way I suddenly think I want to learn about classes. Now, what knowledge do I know and how can I step through it so I can understand based on the bits that I know? Now, this isn't going to give me the perfect solution, but it's given me more confidence in actually starting to build classes through here. So and the next question I actually ask myself is can I split it off? So what I've done is that I've taken the class and just put that class through there as a file on its own and then I've done another one and just called it in. So I've used an include that calls that class, so it calls that second file through there which has just purely got the class and then I'm doing these actions with this class. So if I run this one here it's doing all the things inside here. So it's just calling the class and working on it. So 
so what that means is I can actually break that class away and so I can generalize that class or do something with it and I'm suddenly saying now I'm not going to go on age I'm actually going to go on date of birth and then I'm going to have to create a more complex one rather than show me to find today's date and then um, calculate how old they are from that so you suddenly saying, well that's a more uh, one that's more useful um, and 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 uh, so uh, it, it can be a little bit thing that maybe uh, I'm going to need something to actually change the people's status in the company over time. He started off in quality assurance and now he's a toilet cleaner, and you know, so his status has actually raised all that extra bit through there. So, um, so now I'm able to split it out. So I can put the class into one file and I can actually put the, the main one, which would be my program file, through there. So all I need to do is call the other one, which makes my code a little bit easier to read. Now I might actually have to go and check just to see what the functions are in my class, or I might need to add some more things to it. So that's through there. So we're starting to feel our way through. So the next thing that I do here is that I just go and take my original time capture script that is something like, let's just go and look at this, it's 308 lines long, but what it's also got is it's got another whole load of sub, um, other um, subscripts or subcommands or things in there. So it's got other activities in there as well. So it's not only the main script, but I suddenly think, okay, strip all the rest away and just have my main core script. So on that one there, I've then got my original program, um, I don't know if I needed that or not. And instead of doing a lookup for all these different project codes with a drop down list, I've just got one project code. So I don't want it all fancy. I've still got the GUI coming up. So if I shift and run this one here, if I go through there, you see it's got the pop up box as it was before. So I've got all the elements, but I've only got one. So I don't need a lot of this other noise in there. I just want to fundamentally have this. Now, when I was looking at this, so if we actually just look at the, the time capture of the program itself, we are getting the date, we are getting the duration, we are getting the uh, project name, we're getting the username, which we may or may not want to do. Oh, sorry, that should be down onto another one, I think. And we're getting a description, our activity of what we actually did on that particular, in that duration, on that project through there and on that day. So I've got four variables through there. So I've got date, I've got um, project, I've got duration, and I've got description. So right away, so let's just make a uh, class that that has uh, four things. So I'm gonna call it time sheep event, and it's gonna have a new uh, and I was sort of following Jean's, Jean's uh, thing here, where it, whether it's a string or a date or a, an integer or a string or whatever. I started doing it and I got bored and I didn't do it. And I suddenly think in order hockey, you don't really need it. You've got a variable, it just chucks it into the variable. So um, I've created one, two, three, four, and in fact, I started to use the username as well. So I added a fifth one in there. Because I wanted that, that, that one through here. And then I've just got that show me. So all I'm doing here is I'm using the GUI and I'm calling the duration and the date time and the username and the project string for the project. I'm using those variables. Well, so I'm calling them variables and then I'm creating an instance of my timesheet and I'm getting all of these objects and putting that, or sorry, getting all of these variables and putting them into attributes inside. Then I'm destroying the GUI and then I'm doing a show me. So uh, that means they're still sitting, they're still active such that I can do things with them. So that's what I've done. I've suddenly done exactly what I was doing in my one variable and my three variable one through there. I've created a simple thing and I've got four different stuff. So I can actually just go and do this one again. And here it is, and I'm doing tra-la, and I'm gonna go a little bit of stuff on there, and a little bit of stuff on there, and go, okay. So it's now showing me that I've actually got that. I've got the name, I've got that. So I've got five things in there because I've got added this other item through there. So all of those seem to be coming in. Uh, the project's coming up at the very end for some reason uh, because I've got the, this description and I've got this project at the end. 
that matter. So that means I've got those five items and I'm able to display them. So okay then, I can then say, right, we can then take the next step through. And what's the next step through? Instead of actually just doing this, I'm going to need to go and put it into my, I need to write it to my file. So I need to create another script. Instead of just showing me and just doing it into a message box, I need to now put it into the file of wherever that file is. So I then take that and uh, we're going to do time capture number one. And let's just see. So it should do it here. Record file. May or may not happen through in this one, and I've got a feeling it won't. Mm, no. Okay, we'll see. We'll take it out. So on this one here, oh, sorry, we're going to stop that, and we're going to run it on here. So this is new one through here. We're going to do our pop-up through here. We're going to add this one here. I just decided to just keep all the rest of the coding because I got that core bit right. Although I should have actually just kept it isolated and just done the, the thing through here. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, one, two, there. I go, OK. So here it's showing me what information I've got into there. OK. It's saying what file it's being sent to. So I've just got that as a message box into there. So hopefully. If we look up and see what we're doing there, we're doing, uh, we're creating a new instance of that um, class. We are then running that method, show me. We're then write, writing one to the file. So if we go and look into our file now, so let's go and find our file. It didn't come through. Now, why didn't it come through? One of the reasons it may not have come through is because I have not inside here uh, here we got this record file is called this record file and uh, file append info uh, info file sorry I've now got to do uh, copy and B and I think I've got to do a percentage there. So I've got to give it the variable of where it's supposed to do that. So we've got the record file inside of the class or the instance of this class, but I actually haven't, I, I said, put all of this into that, but I haven't told it what the file is. Now I've actually had to add, when I'm doing this, I've actually had to have the, the name of the file and where it is. Otherwise, so I've actually had to add another variable into this. So I had my four variables and then I added my username and then I've actually had to, the record file. So now if I run this again and then I do out three and I do some blurgle and some blurgle and then I'm going to change this to 555 and I'm going to use process. I go okay. It's showing me that, doing that and if we go and look at our uh, thing now that has done it, 555. So it's written it into there. So we've now got that part working. So that's really good. I sort of, in some ways, I, I, I overstepped myself. I should have actually have still kept it quite simple to make sure that I'm writing to the file. So that's one of the things that I found. When I'm in that instance of, when I'm in the instance of this, I've created an instance of this class, but it doesn't have this record file. Although the variable is up in the actual program itself, it's not in the instance of the um, class. So I have to bring that in. Now, I'm not too sure whether I can actually just have a new class to have all of these things and leave this blank and then actually add it in at this point here. I'm not too sure. So it's something that I need to go and test out somewhere else to see if, if, if I'm uh, able to do that. Anyway, we now have that one through there. So I got to the point where I was suddenly thinking, cool, I've now changed my program over from being what it was, which was just straight auto hotkey, to one where I'm actually using uh, classes. But if I actually just come into uh, the time capture app to class setup that I'm doing, 
there's a couple of things that I actually want to do. I actually got a whole load. If we just look at that, um, uh, the original script, um, and I'll come back to it. It's got a lot of little functions, but they're sort of hidden away, and it's not something I'm very happy about because I have to sort of remember what they are. So if I come back into my uh, original one going through there, so if I come back into Time Capture, and uh, I can just run that one, what you'll find is that I've got inside the task uh, the tray but, uh, thing, I've got all these other ones. Open the file to edit it, upload project codes, create file names to store, remap the hotkeys. So I'm suddenly thinking, they're sort of hidden away and nobody sees them. What if I'm in the middle of doing it? So what I've done, and then when I've tried to do timesheet uh, number two, is suddenly I wanted to add things to it. So I'm, uh, I'll run that and go out three. <coughs> and you see on this one, I've just added a couple of little features. So I added a bit of color into there. I've now choose all of these things down to there. I can go and edit the text file at the beginning. I can also go and edit the project uh, file. So if I suddenly thinking, oh, <coughs> I want another key 12. And uh, so key 12. And I'm going to say uh, AHL um, fluff uh, or class exercises <coughs> I've got a new project now I've got to change the total lines up to 12 because I've got 12 keys now and I can go save bump and I'd need to close that and reload it because I've just updated that one for that one there so if I now come into there I should actually have the order hockey classes exercise so I can now choose that I can say two hours onto that um, did demo and go okay now the other thing that that's got on there as well now it's come down through here and uh, that's the other thing that I've got I've got a tray tick just to say that's activated so it's a good way to know that it's gone somewhere that, uh, that that's where it's going and it's telling me which file it's actually going to and that's another thing that I've got <coughs> which is I was um, I had an instance where I ended up deleting some things <coughs> And I ended up deleting the um, uh, files, uh, the program files. So I, I had a couple of copies of them and ended up deleting the wrong ones. So I lost my <coughs> timesheet files. So I ended up doing two things. One, I ended up moving them <coughs> to a different location. And I also renamed them and I also had a backup file. So I ended up having two files one was created as a CSV and the first one was a text. And I just write to both of them or append information to both of them at the same time. But over time, they might deviate because I might go in and edit one and suddenly think, oh, at the end of the day, I suddenly think, I'm a bit short of my hours there. And then I reflect and suddenly think, oh, that, that five-minute exercise of actually doing an email actually took an hour because I ended up having to do a checkup. I ended up having to modify a document. I ended up having to confirm something with a client. So it ended up being quite a more messy exercise than what I'd actually, the time I'd allocated it to it. So I do find I actually go into the actual project itself and do a bit of an edit in here and suddenly thinking, oh yeah, did demo uh, and uh, 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 modify code. So I code in uh, one two three dot text or something, and then I can actually just uh, save that. Um, so it it it, it um, uh, can just do that as an adding one. But I've got the backup. There's sort of ninety percent there. That, that that's another thing. But this was one of the things I did. So I started to locate my files in different locations, just so um, if I lost the main script file, I still had that. Um, uh, I still had the actual data that I was actually creating all the way through. So as I said, I created uh, uh, the, this um, time capture one through here to make it more useful to somebody else. The same through there is one of the ones I think it's, uh, if I've got that running at the moment uh, and it's still running, I think I've got out seven, so that you can actually go and modify the hotkeys. These are the hotkeys that I use, but somebody else may choose their own for these ones here. So this is something that I thought if you're trying to make a program, you want to make it as useful to other people as lot. And if you're forcing somebody else to use hotkeys that you like, but they suddenly saying, well, actually, I want that to be 
out plus p out p oh sorry that's not going to do it's going to go uh going to go whoppy on me uh but so out p will that work there out p yeah so i can actually have that one through there sorry my right hand out one <laughs> i'm a lefty so everything <laughs> works on my left hand there so i'm going back to my out three uh, let's just go something's happened through there what's happened through there we just go cancel into there and if we go out seven that's got gone back to alpha three so i never saved that um uh, so if somebody's right-handed they've got that but my right hand one uh is uh, the out key is actually another little program and i've got a feeling that i've mapped something else across onto some of the other ones so uh it, it's it's a big you've got to be a bit careful so uh, what i wanted to demonstrate here is that i created a program which i was co I'm comfortable with i know what it is and i know what it does i'm trying to learn something new in the past i've tried to do this up and i've tried to do um, classes and things like that and i've never really understood them so i thought well here's a good time to start applying them i've got some useful resources in regards to uh, uh, jean lalonde's uh, tutorial that he's got through here that is way above my pay station at this point in time and these other ones in in the order on class and also inside uh the help file through here if you actually just look at uh, class uh, this I find quite confusing really objects of class and things like that so I suddenly thought what do I know and so can I start from a really simple point of view so that's what I started to do in these coding so I started to create a class with only one variable and then tested it out and then did a couple of instances then I went into extra variables through there. Then I tried to change some of the variables inside the instances that I changed, or variables or um, attributes, I think they're called. So I suppose if it's outside, it's called a variable. If it comes inside, it's called an attribute. So it's just getting the jargon right as well. But I suddenly had something. So I was able to then suddenly say, well, OK, then I've learned a little bit and I've tested out one or two things. And now I will go and put it in and, and do it so if I break anything if I'm using something in the one variable or the three variable there's there's only a little bit of information in there and if I break it I can actually sort of clean it out and simplify it to find out what's happening so I can learn about those sorts of things so it's still very very baby steps inside of the class but it's how I've approached it now I'll actually have suddenly saying okay then I've got that I've reflected on it I've got a couple of other programs that I've actually got out there. I've got one called um, File, uh, File Save. Uh, can't remember. Uh, think it's 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 one that I've written. And I was only thinking, well, I might see if I can rewrite that now into a class one, to see if 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 I can make that more useful. And I might go and see a couple of the other programs that I've been doing or scripting, and suddenly saying, well, can I take this a step further and do some other things about it? So. From those, I'm now going to try and see if I can use this in some of the ways. And maybe I'll completely cock it up, but it'll give me a bit more familiarity with something that I've struggled with for a long time. But I'm very, very pleased with how much this has gone to taking me away. Now, um, I've got a whole load of playlists for, for this, and I'd actually put this in. I've got one called Beginner's Coders, and some of the things are really rather simplistic and things. But it's almost like I wish somebody had told me this when I was first doing it. And this is one which is this is an approach this i'm trying to do something new but the way to do it is to come from a place where you already know and just do little baby increment steps so you notice that i actually did the one variable thing then i did the three variable things then i split it to the class in one file and the other ones and then i went to the variables where i got my program i stripped it out so they only had the core part of it and i got that to work and then I elaborated and added all those other things in to see whether it was going to break or not, and then to see what I had to do. So I didn't just charge in and actually just do it on the final thing. It actually, there was very careful, considered steps along the way. And, and then I suddenly think, oh, how do I add a variable in there? Or how do I modify a variable that's already there or an, an attribute in there and that and sort of thing? And then, you know, if how do I um, add a variable to a method 
if it's not in the main class and do I actually have to call it in the main class or can I call it in the method later on so these are things that I may need to explore later and then hopefully over time I'll be a little bit more confident with it such that I'll, I'll be able to do you know so something like uh, in, in this one here uh, for if I was going into the this one here do I need to, I've got the record file in the club but do I need to call it at this time or do I need to call it when I'm actually writing it to the file here so maybe instead of having it there I give it uh, in the right to file now I don't know if that will work or not but it's something that I may need to explore later on as long as it's uh, available inside the class itself it might but th and this sort of throws up questions that I will then go and tease and, and start doing it so uh, it's something that I do I sort of something I think about it and then it bugs me and then I've got to go and have a little fiddle and a play and it sort of bright broadens my picture and then I go and do something but what I have found personally is that inside the uh, I, I know uh, Joe has um, he's got a uh, he's building a new classes or uh, class uh, a course that he's got but you know, I usually just work off what's um, uh, uh, available for free, and and I haven't found anything that just deals with the very very first baby steps of how you'd apply it to something that you've actually got, and how you would gain the confidence of what you've got, and then you take the next step. So I, I wanted to do this video um, because it's the first one of my journey along this. Now hopefully I'll get to the point where I'm like John, and I can just bloody throw them around. And, and and rebuild his his um, uh, his his program uh, the uh, QIP, which I think is absolutely brilliant, and uh, and he seems to be very confident in his uses, and I I think his uh, uh, example uh, that comes with this video, if you can go through and you you can somewhere down here, uh, it says there's a link to where you can actually get the data, so you actually have to sign up to to get it for free. Um, it, it's worth doing uh, to, to me it, it, but I, I like to have a resource and, and, and to do it but I found that applying it to something of my own gives me the first bit where I can suddenly thinking right I, I've been able to do something maybe not correctly but I've been able to do something and I've been able to make it to work so maybe the next time I can start thinking and maybe I can start thinking from maybe a I'll, I'll start this program as a class and then I'll, I'll do add these other bits around the outside instead of I've got this working and I'm going to plunk this class in, in, in at the bottom at the end. So it's, it's um, uh, baby steps. Um, so I hope it's useful for you um, because it's for me, I, I've, this has been hovering over me for quite a few years and I suddenly thought, no, I've got to bite the bullet and actually do something. So, um, and I've got to... I, I've sort of got a use case for it. I'm sort of comfortable with some functions now and I still write quite simplistic code, but it meets my needs and, and, and it's it sort of like, it's within my realm of confidence. So I actually want to sort of expand that confidence to be able to do some other things. And I think that the nice thing with, uh, I use a few classes, uh, Evil C and there's a few other people that have got some great um, classes that I do use and they've got great examples such that I can follow. And so I, I, I like the concept of them and they're sort of, you can just plug them in from the outside and just use them like if you've got a nice function, you can just call it and use it as, as, as in your thing. So you don't have to bother writing that code. It's there available for you actually to do. And then you can actually take it to the next level um, and, and just use them. So they're almost like you're building your own little um, sub kits and things like that. And I've got a few little sub um, functions that I use um, over over quite a lot, especially the one for actually developing drop down lists of, of actually just having a file of keys and actually just building from that file into a drop down list that I find rather than just having the whole thing within the script itself. So that you can change them as you go. So, um, uh, hopefully I'll do another one once I'm a little bit confident and, and hopefully I can transition from this one to the next one so that I can suddenly say well the next step that I've found um, with this so hopefully that's plugged a little bit of the gap of the uh, all the hotkey stuff for um, access to classes anyway thank you very much for watching I hope it's of help thank you